Ladies and gentlemen, I hope this is working. Thank you, sir, for that very kind introduction. Um, the good thing is this is a very eclectic audience. I can see some gray hair, some no hair, um, and um, charming ladies. So obviously very mixed uh, in a bunch of people. It's always uh, difficult to pitch the presentation right to you know your audience. So since I do not know my audience and I pitch my presentation wrong, Enjoy it. <laughs> um, you know, when I was asked to speak here today on the subject of penetrating rural marshes, I agreed almost instantly. And the reason is that uh, this project, the launch, and if you like, the effective uh, creation of a new category in the Indian marketplace, is truly an amazing journey of discovery. Because I've learned all the standard principles, Unilever principles of great advertising, Colgate systems of building brands, standard lessons in distribution across these companies, how to go to rural markets, how to make it work, how to respect the return on investment for your dealers and your stockists in small markets. All those principles are very much a part of the history of what I've done. But in trying to address this project, create this new category, a lot of those things have been unlearned. It genuinely has been a voyage of discovery for me personally, and I think for the industry, the direct to home television industry, the satellite television industry, it's been a journey of discovery. As indeed, the launch of other new categories in India, such as mobile television, I would like to believe have been journeys of discovery. So, it's really phenomenal and that's one of the wonderful things about working in the Indian market. And I saw this very fascinating presentation stuff about cars and the automotive market just now. Um, everything that was mentioned by the previous speaker are absolutely right. Those are really the things that count. And um, if we can gather all this and learn some of it and practice some of it, some of it, we'll be very lucky and very fortunate and successful. So the launch of the DTH business in India really, the reason I came from selling soap and toothpaste to this business, was that I understood very early in the game that it was about selling a new concept and creating a new category. So really it wasn't that different from doing what I had done before. And yet it was completely different because this was not a product like soaps or detergents or toothpaste that is bought every month in a repeat cycle. And a re-evaluation happens every month. All that you do, of course, is you pay for it every month by way of a subscription. But you buy it once, pretty much. And then revisit it maybe a little later when you want to upgrade your hardware from a standard set of box, maybe to a personal video recorder like Tata Sky Plus. Or move to high definition. That's when you re-evaluate the whole thing. But otherwise, it's a, an ongoing service that you buy. And the challenge really was how to accelerate adoption. We've forgotten because it was only five years ago. The challenge was to convince the Indian housewife that she needed a set-top box between herself and the television set. Something that never ever existed. There was a void there. There was a wire which used to travel to the back of the TV set. And the consumer didn't care and doesn't care where the pictures came from. And you had to suddenly tell this home Hey, will you spend 5,000 rupees to buy a set-top box? And why? Oh, it will give you better picture. It will give you better quality sound and audio. Very generic kind of propositions. That challenge of selling the concept is what made me so excited. The other thing is, every time I present a slide on market size, the slide is prepared usually about seven days before I present. By the time I go to make the presentation, the numbers will change. That's the dynamism of this category. That 27 million of DTH is 30 million, as I present now. The market for DTH is growing at roughly a million a month. Not very far from what mobile telephony achieved. In fact, they've gone into 10 million and so on. But that's what's happening. Exploring. But if you look at the uh, perspective, Overall, 225 million households in the country, of which 145 
million are TV households to divide roughly by five. And within that, the pay TV homes are now about 120 million. Sorry, actually it should say TV homes are 120 million. Pay TV is what DTH does plus cable. Cable is at about 95 million. 90 to 95 and DTH is 30. That's pay TV. Now, what's really therefore happening is the first thing that should strike you is that a hell of a lot of households who don't even have television. So the headroom for growth and the opportunity is phenomenal. Half the country in numbers doesn't even have TV. The landscape, of course, is changing. All of us in our smart guys and suits are now trying to walk into a territory where people are actually pretty different in one sense. And in another sense, they're exactly the same. So, if I was to preach numbers to you, I'm supposed to do this as a business profession. Um, the standard data, is it possible to bring the lights a little? Excuse me? Because I think the slide might not be very clear. Just slightly in the middle. Anyway, the point being made really is that if you look at the so-called deprived segment here, which accounts for more than half the population, the current projections are that that half will go to a third in the space of about 10 years. And I remember presenting similar slides 10 years ago. NCAER put through data talking about aspirals and all this, very similar. And those 10 years ago, those numbers used to look foolish. You kept saying, this is not possible. But guess what? We've exceeded the estimates for made 10 years ago already. And this is therefore quite fascinating that this whole business of the aspirers, the seekers, are the ones which are growing significantly at the expense of people who you would consider to drive today. And this is likely to happen very quickly. Second thing, and it's the point I saw in your presentation, so I'm not the motives, it's exactly right. It's not merely a change in the demographic, but the shift is in ability to spend and dispose of income. And these projections, these are studies done by McKinsey recently for the whole farm industry, clearly show that it's the per capita disposable income in dollars which is growing literally by 50% in a decade in rural India. You said something about, you know, so much money being available for people to spend. That's entirely correct. Because rural India, once again, we see is an amorphous mass of poor people. Not true. Completely not true. And this is the, the most interesting change that's taking place. And here is some data to support uh, the hypothesis that this will be so. Of course, the most dramatic thing in every forum we go to these days is talk of teledensity. But look at the growth. We're really talking in 10 years of nothing to 21%. Growth in intelligence. Connectivity in roads, uh, road connectivity, another point which came up in the previous presentation, from 40 to 70% of the day. Electrification of households. This is central to the business I run. Because if there is no electric power, there's no television. And if there's no television, what's the point of buying a set-top box? Of course, the unique Indian innovative mind comes into play and car batteries are run and tractors are run on the side and all the television can be watched in the evening if the power fails. So people will do those things. It also has tremendous implications for opportunities in neighboring categories. I believe very firmly that if we could come up with a cost-effective solar power solution to run low-powered set-top boxes and television sets and homes, one electric light and one fan. That's all you need. You will be able to transform the television market. That 50% homes that don't have TV, I can guarantee in 10 years they don't have television. But you need that collateral resource to develop. You need some bright entrepreneur and some really serious spenders to come in and change that reality. But that's the option. And of course, permanent houses, again, that's something that affects the GTH business. If you don't have a home, you can't put up a satellite dish, so clearly these things will make a difference. 
Britain, the face of Britain is changing. We've all heard of, I think, I saw Shiva's name there, yes? So he's already spoken to you about the whole question of what they're trying to do by way of taking retailing out into rural India. The whole IPC venture of going into I, the Chopal uh, project and a host of other companies who've also decided that they need to look at retailing in rural India in a more organized fashion rather than the really cheapest chips dispersed model. It currently services that sector. So this has very serious implications for products and services to be made available to that section of the country. The distribution challenge in India, in one sense, is unique. And I thought I would share this with you because it was recently published, again, the Kinsey data published by the Wall Street Journal just last week. Very, very interesting insight. The point that's being made here is that in India, uniquely because of the dispersed character of the geography, as well as the cost of reaching that dispersed geography. You have a situation where the distribution and selling costs, which consist of selling costs, general and administrative expenses, is amongst the highest in India, and as a consequence, 30 to 35 percent in India versus even China at 25 to 30. Brazil, Mexico and Russia, similar countries in terms of the levels of development, have lower costs in this area. And as a consequence, the margins that are available here in India are the poorest. Now this is a very, very important and serious business uh, fact. Because company after company, and I've had the good fortune of working for four or five, who have operated in India are obsessed with margin. I was sharing this with some friends at the coffee room obsessed with budgets and particularly multinational companies who actually take the map of the world and then sort of put it into boxes of what percentage margin which part of the world makes and then they have an average benchmark and everybody is supposed to meet that benchmark and if you're a poor marketing vector in an emerging economy you're dead to start okay? so i think this reality is something which is unique to this country and i can tell you that in selling the concept of satellite television in india this has been the single biggest challenge. The reason why the DTH industry in India has already lost more than 10,000 crores, lost in the back word, invested, uh, is that you're operating poor or no margin. You have a price war in all its fury, all in the category. Everybody is killing everybody else, trying to go lower and lower in price. And as a consequence, all my friends in the Times of India and Forbes magazine will be delighted to know that the Indian consumer spends less by way of monthly subscription for satellite TV than he spends on buying his daily newspaper. So 200 channels of television come to cheaper than buying a newspaper. Doesn't make sense. It's not reality. And when you go to the government and say this is terrible, taxation must come down, you know what the finance minister guys said to me? You knew what you were getting into. You knew the business model, you knew the tax levels, you knew the revenue share you had to pay. So stop crying. Go back to it. So this is a big challenge. And it's a unique uh, challenge that we have to deal with in this country. Now addressing global India, the nice thing is that there are always these very, very typical, almost prototypical archetypes images that come to mind. Little hut, small TV, big tele satellite TV, uh, dish sitting on. Not true anymore. It's changing and changing dramatically. Why is it that satellite TV, which is otherwise considered a fairly urban, sophisticated product, will work in rural India? The first reason why this is going to work is quite simply the issue of an advanced technology. When you beam a signal from a satellite in, the, in space over the Indian subcontinent, the signal reaches every remote corner of the country. In a forest, the top of Mount Everest, sorry, Mount Everest not in India, but on the top of uh, a uh, mountain, and in the deepest remotest village. Whereas, for a cable operator to deliver that signal there, 
he has to actually lay wires to that remote location. He must have a cluster which is economically viable to serve. And as a consequence, in economic terms, the incremental or the marginal cost of every new connection for the DTH industry is the same as anywhere in the country. It's exactly the same everywhere in the country. Whereas for cable, and even for terrestrial television, which is what Dudla should deliver to transmitters, it's an incremental cost. Which is why satellite TV is a cost-effective, sensible, if you like, very effective way of reaching rural India. So that's the first most important thing. Uh, interestingly, it was this very insight that led to a strategic conundrum. Um, a company, one of my competitors, a company called Dish TV, who launched before us, two and a half years before us. And looking at this fact, that there are huge numbers of cable dark areas in the country, their stated strategy was to go to those markets first. Classic low hanging fruit. Let's go for those markets that are cable dark. But guess what? Those markets were cable dark because the people who lived there did not have enough disposable income to spend on cable. So they couldn't create the commercial justification for cable to come there in the first place. So what happened was that this really created 2 million of the worst possible subscribers in the country. They wouldn't pay, they would churn out, and you had basically all your subscriber acquisition costs. So when we were launching, I sat down, we looked at this whole thing with my team, and we said, guess what? We are going to Bombay, Delhi, Calcutta, Madras, and Bangalore, where all these guys who love to sip their Chardonnay will say, satellite TV is right. Want it now. That's exactly what happened. So we mocked up all of the predominant market share in the top 50 cities of the country, established brand leadership, sets your know, standards of service and so on, and then said we will go trickle down. So it's an interesting example I'm mentioning because when you talk of rural India, the first instinct is to leap in feet first and say let's go distribute to rural India. You've got to understand how the economics will pan out and why and what should be your rollout and phased launch strategy in a market as diverse as India. The other interesting thing was many people in this audience would have bought Tata Sky at 4,999 rupees for a box. I think Pascal looks like he did. It's going to turn green. Today the box is available for 999. So the cost of hardware has actually come down five times in a space of five years. And this has happened because of the previous slide I showed you about the volume explosion. I've been spending more than a lot of uh, inordinate amount of time in China. Because the Chinese are the first to understand a volume opportunity and very quickly engineer products to deliver pricing, which is unbelievable. Nobody can compete. So we buy Matpa hardware from China. I don't know how much time I have, but this lovely story about a company called Huawei, one of the leading Chinese companies, run by a gentleman called Mr. Run, R E N. Mr. Ronan doesn't speak any English. He arrives in a meeting with uh, an interpreter, a lady in a white pantsuit. And the nice thing is she starts speaking before he does, which means that she knows exactly what I'm going to say. Either he says the same thing in all meetings, or she does very clever. So anyway, Mr. Ronan came to this meeting in Bombay House uh, in, uh, in Mumbai. And the meeting was with Mr. Ratan Tata. And Mr. Tata had asked two or three other of our chief executives in the telecom business from various companies to attend, and I was also there. And Mr. Run and his companions were there. And Mr. Run said, good to see you, thank you very much. I just want to tell all of you today, we are going to be bigger than Cisco next year. That was his opening camp. We are going to be bigger than Cisco next year. Okay? Secondly, you are running diverse businesses, here's my business card. Now, you have to answer three questions, each one of you. One, what do you want by way of specifications for the product you want to buy? Two, at what price do you want it? And three, when do you want it? 
if my management team cannot deliver all three, call me on this one. You know something? I ordered a set of boxes in the Huawei. They delivered two months in advance of the schedule. And the product is absolutely first rate in quality. No more testing. That is the sense of going for big markets and big volumes and having a sense of mission to deliver something. <coughs> and this is a real story. I was there, I've done it. This is exactly how it works. So you've got to understand that if you have to deliver value to the market, you have to be brutal about cutting costs and bringing efficiency. The second thing we have to do is to understand how much is the consumer really willing to spend on what you deliver. And there is no single answer. All my years in marketing have taught me that there are many answers to how much the consumer is willing to spend. The only thing is the consumer will always seek value. Car presentation, you said, they all come back and say, Kitta deti hai, kitta damu deliver. Absolutely right. But there are consumers who do want that Mercedes S class and who will pay that money, albeit with all kinds of other uh, you know, kind of, uh, comments and issues. But this market, the Indian market, is probably the most challenging market in terms of the segmentation challenge. And we will talk a little more about that as we go forward. Today, this is our portfolio. It's not very complex as companies go, but at the top, we have a personal video recorder, which by next month will also have high definition capability. We sell it at 6,000 rupees and we subsidize it because the product actually costs more. We've launched high definition boxes as well in the middle of the market. 2599 and we subsidize it. And of course, there's the base box at the bottom of the market. And I can't resist this. I always say that CK Pillar got it wrong. There is a misfortune at the bottom of the building for most of most businesses. And I can tell you from my own personal experience, Lever, Colgate, here, everybody lost money in Colgate. Like Uniform to build big businesses. It's very, very, very expensive. And you have to subsidize and cut prices, particularly in very competitive categories. And you have to have therefore the courage and the ability to sustain if you want to operate that and really grow big. And the scale you need to make that profitable is truly challenging. Without that scale, of course, you're dead. But if you can achieve that scale, you need some categories, some companies done it, then yes, it's got a great future. But Obviously, this strategy of segmenting the market reflects in the reality the way it has finally emerged. So in four years from the time that we launched, where the urban markets used to contribute about 55%, and what I classify as rural very loosely was a little less than that. Today, as we speak, you can see that the entire proportions have flipped. So the growth is actually coming out of Markets beyond the top 50 cities. And for both generic reasons, and like I mentioned earlier, the marginal cost and the fact that people really don't receive television signals, which are very interesting. You go to a small town in India, what happens is even if there's a cable operator and a connection, he sort of does what he has to do during the day. In the evening, he comes and puts on the signal for you about 5 o'clock, prime time. And then you can watch cable, A, as long as there's electricity, B, Provided he doesn't want to go have a drink or have a meal. Because then he wants to do that just which is often goes on. So you're left high and dry. That's the cable experience in most of India outside the big cities. So that was the big opportunity for us. A seamless service which continually offers good quality without any break round the clock. And it's got a huge impact on the way, therefore, the volumes have come. Now, what people really look for out of a television service at the end of the day, we discover, is that they must get to watch what they want to watch. And one of the problems with television marketing overall, in most economies has been, you've been given a whole lot of channels and many of those are absolutely not interested. 
But um, 15 years ago, longer, I was transferred to Bangalore from Bombay. When Unilever acquired the Lipton business and I was told now go to the So I moved to Bangalore and we got a cable connection. That's all we got. And 85% of the content was in South Indian languages. I just didn't know what to do. And there was nothing one could do. For five years we just got used to the idea. Maybe the benefit one should have derived is done in Canada. But it didn't happen. But the truth was, you pretty much in India watched what your cable operator gave. And the big insight that we finally came up with was, people should have the ability to choose. Introduce choice in view. And the country like India, where linguistic choice is so, so important, we've now started offering two language packs free. You can choose them and choose their packs. And it suddenly made such a huge impact on the way people buy and consume tea, that it's going to change the way things are going. We just launched it a couple of months ago, six weeks ago, and flying, absolutely flying. So the mix has had to change. The number of channels we carry in different languages, of course, continues to be quite a challenge. There's not enough capacity in India, but I'm not going into that. But you can see here, our total of about 189 channels on the platform, 72 currently, regional channels. And then the bigger challenges are that within each regional language, consumers want all the genres, from sport to news to... There are 100 news channels in India. That is news channels. And sometimes you ask us about the entertainment channels. <laughs> now, can I get into this? Okay. Maybe you dim the lights and run this commercial so that we can talk about मैं जब भी इंग्लिश बोली ना लोग हंसे पता नहीं वाय बट हर बार मेरा कच्चा है फिर एक दिन बबलू मुझे डाटा सर पे एक्टिव इंग्लिश सिखाई और बोली मम्मा इंग्लिश लर्निंग सो इजी बस फिर रोज इनसाइड डी हाउसिंग जब भी टाइम मिली मैं इंग्लिश स्पीकिंग सीखी सैटरडे संडे को रिविजन भी करी धीरे धीरे माय इंग्लिश बिकमिंग सो गुड इन कि नाउ व्हेन आई स्पीक इन इंग्लिश पीपल लुक एट मी एंड से वाओ दिस इज शर्मा व्हाट कमांड ओवर द लैंग्वेज एंड व्हाट प्रोनंसिएशन टू व्हिच आई वुड लाइक टू रिप्लाई आई बिग योर पार्टनर इट्स नॉट प्रोनंसिएशन इट्स प्रोनंसिएशन टाटा स्काई लाइव है एक्टिव इंग्लिश अब आप घर बैठे अंग्रेजी अंग्रेजी और उनका सही प्रोनंसिएशन जब देख सकते हैं गेट टाटा स्काई एक्टिव आई यू लाइक दिस इन that's up. The launch of Active English, it's about six months old, for me personally has been a phenomenal learning experience. I first called my marketing team and our interactive team together and I said, I think we have the opportunity to go into areas such as education and health and really make a difference and start changing, helping change India. So everybody nodded and said, yeah, one of those nutcase moments again, he's talking about the big things. And I said, here's the opportunity. You know, there are all these children who are going to come into the job economy. If they don't know English, they won't get jobs. So if we can help them become fluent in English or understand English, this is the big one. So let's go for it. And then we did some other stuff. We called the British Council to get a bit of branding going from that. We said the British Council is a waste of time. They don't know how to speak English. Uh, we had to do most of the work, but the branding had Anyway, we created this whole thing, and then we went and tested, consumer tested, the concept and the execution. And wow, classic. The kids said, we are taught English in school, thank you. Don't please ruin our television doing now. Try to teach us English. Because then we want to play game, we want to go on Okay? But while these group discussions were happening, the children, their mothers had come over. And after the group discussion, the young mothers said, Hamku to Angrezi seekna hai. And the insight we got was, young mothers are embarrassed <coughs> to go to parent-teacher meetings and they cannot speak a word of English. Young mothers are embarrassed because they can't order a pizza in a small restaurant. Young mothers are embarrassed because they cannot greet their husband's colleagues and they come home in any language except their own. This group of young women is hungry and desperate to learn 
if you like, in today. And today, less than six months, a quarter of a million young housewives are subscribing to Activity on Dark Sky. They pay money to do this. Every afternoon, in the privacy of their home, without embarrassment, they can practice their vocabulary, understand and learn key words from the Hindi to English. This is the power of technology. Because one of the big changes of satellite TV versus analog TV, and certainly DTH television was, that TV became a two-way experience rather than a one-way couch potato experience. So you can actually use a remote control and interact with your television set. Greater control. And the PBR, which allows you to record a rewind program, extends that concept of control even further so that you can watch TV and watch what you want, when you want, which is again different than that. So this was very, very interesting learning for us. And um, we found that the stickiness of the application also in rural India is much, much higher than in urban markets where there are other opportunities to learn uh, things like this. So this has been a great uh, insight and a great learning for us. We also have something called Fun Learning for Kids on our platform. And here again you can see the degree of adoption. Young children, 41% coming out of rural India. So clearly, the medium and the product and the service is becoming a vehicle for change and certainly within the area of, if you can call it, edutainment. It's worth playing a very, very interesting role. One of the things we had to do to recognize the reality of this shift in our subscriber base and the growth in our subscriber base was to make sure that the back end of the service can actually meet the demands of this population which prefers to speak its own language when it communicates. So even at our national call centers, today we offer 11 languages 24-7 at any given time. And there's automatic switching from one part of the country to another should you want to speak a language which is not being catered to, say in the Mohali uh, call center, and somebody suddenly speaks in Telugu, it automatically gets transferred to Hyderabad. And Mumbai and Jamshedpur over there. So this has been one important aspect of uh, localizing, recognizing and uh, customizing your work. We were the first platform to put our electronic programming guide, the EPG, which is your navigation tool on the platform, in Hindi in addition to English. So today you can choose. When you go onto the service, you can choose which language you want to operate in. Because now we are struggling with bandwidth because I want to do this in Malayalam and I want to do this in Tamil and I want to do this in Bengali. But all of it consumes bandwidth and be very, very scarce in terms of bandwidth. So can't really do that uh, just now, but working towards it. So this is another thing that you, you travel to some of these markets uh, in uh, the famous Cowbell and you have an EPG in English, it's like Greek. Nobody understands what you're offering. But you have it in Hindi, no matter what. Even our broadcaster and channel partners, we encourage them now to give us their feeds in a way that by pressing a button on the remote, you can change language. So you perceive even channels like CBB, sorry, CBB is um, from the BBC in languages like Hindi, Tamil, Telugu. And you can actually receive the same uh, video, but the audio will be history channel, uh, TLC. Like National Geographic, the so-called economically active would be 160, but of this huge 700 billion, only about 120 billion are really economically active today. So the aggregate expenditure, the way money is still being spent, is completely disproportionate. It's 1,200 rupees ad x per head versus the mere 60, and it's a function of the numbers. Very clear. But that's the way money is being spent in India. We cannot run away from this. Interestingly, customizing the spend is going to be, in our view, one of the most important ways to match the way the market is going. So, a lot of the advertising that is currently being undertaken, certainly at Dr. Scott, we are trying to localize and customize it as much as possible. 
Now this is not great news. People have been trying to do this for some time in many categories. But I don't believe that enough of this has been happening so far. So from using print in vernacular to using local radio stations now, and of course on-ground activities and activations such as van activities and communication in a contextualized local flavor is becoming increasingly important and I believe a matter of strategic importance for most marketers in India as we address rural India. We recently left this campaign announcing the 999 rupee price. No fancy footwork here, except that in every region, the visual code adopted actually spoke to the local vernacular personality. So even the depiction of the way during festival season women dress, you did it locally and executed it locally. So these are small things, but we believe the journey started making a difference. And of course, we use the opportunity to sell the fact that we are offering now great choice in terms of the packages and the language channels that went along with those packages. Um, in rural markets, of course, pricing always works and works well. So I think it's an issue of the focus, the customization. And wherever possible, where we have interactive services, making sure that those two are explained in a manner where the adoption so today, in terms of rural contribution, as you can see, our subscribers, this is the, sh this is the shift that's taken place. From 3664 in 2006, we're talking of 4654 in 2010. Okay. And I must point out that Tata Sky, as a brand and as a service, has a much greater urban skew, competitively speaking, than a lot of our competitors, who, like I said to you earlier, I described the low honey food strategy and the low price, they are probably even more so, more skewed to rural markets. So the big thing is happening in rural India. Last one, I thought I'd get a bit esoteric as well, otherwise it's not sophisticated enough for the business. Um, the first is that the adoption of some of these technologies in rural India, and certainly the adoption of digital TV or satellite television is actually much greater in rural India than it is in urban India. The inertia to move from a cable operator in, in urban India is still very high, and the alacrity to move in rural India is much greater. Part of the reason is what I explained earlier in my presentation about the generic benefit of moving to satellite TV versus the way cable is operated. But the truth is, these markets are poorly served by conventional analog terrestrial television or analog cable. And therefore, digital TV generically is of greater interest to these consumers. And they accept it much better. This is clearly some this is IRS data, it's not company data. The other point, and forgive this because this is the bit done by a marketing manager, so I know these are not slides which are meant to uh, really come through. But Critically, and this is an important one. When we talk of rural India, very often the temptation is to look, look at rural India as an amorphous mass of people, all sort of hovering around the poverty line. But the truth is that the entire demographic distribution is different. The first point, and a very interesting point, is that 78% of the rural population can be reached by targeting 35% of rural areas. And it's very interesting because that's the way the population falls. And you don't therefore need to advertise all over rural India, so to speak, pan India, to reach rural populations meaningfully. The second point is an old issue that most marketers in India have been aware of, which is talking to what is called R1, R2 rather than R3, R4. You're all familiar with that. And that clearly are the opinion makers, the people who make the difference, the people who have the disposable income. They are the, key, the people who are emulating and they play their form. The role of providing the demonstration effect for their neighbors. So targeting that lot and talking to them and addressing them and reaching them 
And once you get your presentation scope of going to these panchayats and uh, you know, village punches and all that, absolutely right. These are the people who actually make a difference. So you don't really need to spread your expenditure so wide and thin that it becomes ineffective. That's really all that I have to say. Thank you all very much. If the, the target audience is a rural uh, segment uh, and the content that you are providing, I am not, not from the executive in this time, I am not chief of from GE. So uh, my question was more like uh, and the content that you provide is for kids and, and women, uh, the young mothers who speak English. What about the actual farmers? I mean, I except perhaps the old Durdarshan, Krishi, Gyan or whatever the program was. Krishi Darshan. Krishi Darshan. I do not see many uh, such such content in uh, either uh, Tata Sky or video content. It's not available anywhere. Anyway, so if, if the audience is there, I was in a daily conference in Chandigarh last week and they were saying that a guy who comes such a I mean, those, those kind of feed, what kind of... Very good question. So let me try and address it straight away. You know, water goes where there is a place for it. Krishi Darshan used to run when I was 10 years old and now 60. Right. In 50 years, Krishi Darshan has not changed. It is the world's <coughs> most boring program. You put three farmers in front of it, even they fall asleep. So the issue is, is there really good quality content which is of interest to these people, which would provide them the so-called technical knowledge of their livelihood uh, and uh, their profession, as well as entertain them and keep them away. This is actually a question which many broadcasters in India need to address. And all of them who are investing these large amounts of money in wigs for women on the Sasbik and Lohutri need to address this question. There's a very large market. So it's a broadcast issue. We have a distribution platform. We can only give you what is available in the country. And we can only give you what people want to watch. At the moment, nobody wants to watch Christian history. You can, so I will pass on your message to Star TV, Sony, Z, uh, Colors, and all of them, that there is an opportunity for farm based programming. I agree with you. But it needs to be done for you. The next big boss can be in a farm. The next big boss can be in a farm, but you'll see the same women. <laughs> uh, I have a photo of them. Yeah. I have a two part question. First is Has Tata uh, have any interest in? Acquiring a network or starting their own network, uh, like he mentioned, you know, doing your own content. Second, have you guys experimented pay per view? Okay, good. Thank you for that. First of all, we are a joint venture between Tata Sons, News Corp, which is Smart TV, and Telasec, the finance uh, uh, private equity company in Singapore. So the content piece is actually coming from Star, in many senses, uh, they have the expertise. Secondly, Indian DTH regulations set down by the government of India bar a distribution platform in the DTH space from creating and owning content. So we can't do that. Thirdly, even if we could, as the business manager for this business, I would say, let's stick to the knitting. Because you need expertise to create content. You need studios, you need a very different kind of expertise. There are enough people producing content. So I would be happy to take it from them rather than getting into content creation. Assets. Your last question was pay-per-view. Tata Sky is the country's most successful pay-per-view service. We ran a film called Tabang on pay-per-view last week. We got 250,000 rates in three days. So the movies are priced between 25 rupees, which is stupid, to 75 rupees. But then if you go to a marketplace, you spend 500 rupees plus the popcorn. So it's very good value. It's improving. It's working well. We're trying to take it beyond movies to things like events and possibly high quality sports and niche programming. New technologies like Tata Sky Plus will also allow us to bring in stuff like push video, where overnight we can put in a movie and say, if you want to watch it, press the button at your convenience, watch it and you can enjoy it. So it's very much part of what we do. You see Muni Bigger, you can hold your wife's hand. <laughs> uh, true, it's a completely different experience. 
I completely agree with you. Uh, this is what I keep telling the film producers. Don't confuse theatre viewing with home viewing, the two different markets. And in theatre viewing, people go for an experience which is beyond the movie. No, which is absolutely right. the margins and the constraints in getting into the phone market. What is uh, your view on uh, overcome that issue? The second question is, uh, I mean, with respect to, uh, you have, in, in, in making up the strategy, you have some good uh, achievements and some failures. What would be one uh, thing of failures and what is your direction kind of thing? You go to a business school? No, sir. Normally when we do interviews, you say, tell us about what? This is in strengths. Okay. Uh, first, most serious response to your margin question. You're right. It is a challenge. But like any business which has a portfolio of products and services, there are certain brands and services within that portfolio whose job is to earn good margin and make good money. And there are other brands in that portfolio who give critical mass to that business. It's true of FMCG, it's true for a lot of businesses which have portfolios. Our approach not in that different. So we did two or three things. First, as I mentioned at the beginning of my presentation, we went to the slightly more sophisticated consumer, better quality subscriber, who was willing to pay more for quality of service and brand name. So that's one. Secondly, we were the first to bring in value added services on our platform. I don't know whether you have to have a sky, but you can actually have a darshan of temples and artis on Tata Sky. You can actually do, actually do some tele shopping on Active Mall. You um, can, of course, have Active English and fun learning for kids. And people pay money for this. And the insight for value added services we got was that on an average, most of our subscribers spend 180 minutes a day watching TV. This shows you what India is doing. 180 minutes a day watching TV. Out of that, 35 minutes are on interactive services on data side. So that was clearly an opportunity. So we charge for that, and that helps boost our value. So it's the quality of subscriber and the additional value added services. And of course, high end work like data sky plus, etc., with the subscription is higher. That has resulted today in a situation where out of the six DTH platforms, Tata Sky has the best output of all, by far. So that's the margin. The margin of the distributors. Oh, I'm sorry, distributor margin. Distributor margin tends to be similar across the country for any category within that category. But the trade spending does tend to go up when people get desperate to get more volume. So that's part of the price war, it varies. But typically the kind of distributor margin today is I think about 200 rupees a box. Uh, pretty much. Yeah. Was it a third question? <laughs> sorry, there was one more. The failure, sorry, big. Success and failure. <coughs> ah. I guess um, if I was to look at what I think we should have done better, <coughs> I think we should have possibly decided to go more for volume than just value a little earlier in the game. But having said that, I don't consider it a failure. I consider it a constraint. Because we've already invested as a platform 3,500 crores in this business. If I did that, I would have invested 4,500 crores. And Mr. Rupert Murdoch and Mr. Nathan Tata were very unhappy. So it's a question of financial constraint of uh, cutting your coat according to your cloth and setting your priorities based on the way the business is envisioned. So I don't think it was a mistake or a failure, but it was an important strategic decision. Yes, sir. It's a weird yeah. idea, uh, yeah. okay. but, uh, but I think there's uh, something happening in the electrical industry. Do you foresee that uh, we can have an electricity transmission by satellite network, in which case the business would be? Because today in ENT losses, we, uh, India loses around 65,000 crore of rupees. I want to say about qualified answer that question. But I can just say it's a bit like saying can we run cars on hydrogen? Of course you can. 
uh, or that you know catalytic converters are going to change the future of the automotive industry, or can we produce uh, water out of whatever? Of course, all these technologies. But solar power, I think, is probably the single biggest opportunity in India. Talking of energy, here. single biggest opportunity. If we are one country which has more sunlight than many others around the year. If we can find economic models, that will transform things dramatically. The government is investing huge amounts of money in nuclear energy. If you said this is what Sarkozy said uh, last week, uh, the kinds of investments that have been made, that will make a difference. But the, to the broader point, you are right. Once electric power reaches remote markets, I think the whole host of products and services that perform and have a much better market. I'm not discussing my product development plans. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. Yes. Um, so this is about the point you made earlier about ten thousand crore investment that the retail industry of you you use the word loss. You used it loosely more than that. Yeah. It's so I was asking that. Uh, Coupled with the price wars which are happening, and also there is some talk about portability being allowed across portability. For mobile telephones. No, for for DP ah, operators okay. as well. So how do you foresee the uh, competition in the market then? Once that comes into play, and ten thousand already into the market, and price wars already exist. So let me ask you a first question, a second question first. What what you call portability in the industry is called interoperability. It's a complete lunacy. The policy said that every set-top box should be interoperable with another operator. The question immediately is why? The answer was so consumers don't have to buy a box every time. Two things. One, the moment you do that, you are asking the whole industry to adopt the same technical standard across the board. So everybody must be on the same technical standard. Otherwise, you can't do it. Physically and technically. That's one. Secondly, in this business, what is not widely understood is it's not just a simple box. There's a very sophisticated middleware inside the box, which is proprietary, which actually protects your signal. One of the big things about satellite TV, which I didn't speak of today, is the fact that it has completely killed piracy, which is the biggest bane of the cable industry in India. Ninety percent of Indian cable signals are pirated. That is, there is no declaration. This has been killed by the technicians. So the middleware is central and is proprietary. For the interoperability to work, that means that that middleware cannot be proprietary, must be open. That's the second point. The third point is, we have tremendous technical constraints in terms of the transponder capacity of the network to run channels to. So standards are developing rapidly. There are compression standards in the box, And their compression standards on satellites. I'm not going to bore the whole audience, but different manufacturers, different DTH platforms have adopted different standards. To begin with, therefore, today, technically, interoperability is not possible. So I had gone and offered to government that we should introduce commercial interoperability, which means if somebody wants to return his box and take another one, there should be a commercial model which will facilitate. And I think that makes the most sense. The TRAI has finally understood this. <coughs> Actually, now recommended to government, forget about interoperability; it doesn't make any sense. And finally, pricing comes. When the price of the box is coming up to 999, you can throw away your box after a year into a dustbin and buy a new one for 999. So, why who wants it? No, I agree. I, so it's not in our interest in any case. It should happen. But I'm saying even otherwise, the objective arguments against it are very strong. Okay, I think we're running late on time. I wanted to take this opportunity to thank Mr. Vikram Kaushik for a wonderful presentation.